all of the factors of the path build on right view, which means they all contain an element of discernment or wisdom. And the question sometimes arises, where in the practice of mindfulness is the element of wisdom? There's a general tendency to see it in the quality of sampajanya, or alertness. But alertness just notices what's happening. When things are there, it knows that they're there. When they're not there, it knows that they're not there. Which is a basis for discernment, but it's not discernment in and of itself. And John Lee, I think, is right in identifying the discernment element with ardency. Ardency is defined in the text as the feeling you have when you realize that there are unskillful men states in your mind and they're dangerous. That if you don't get rid of them, there's going to be danger. If you don't give rise to skillful states, there's going to be danger. It's very closely related to heedfulness. And the Pali term, atapa, is very closely related to otapa, which is the fear of evil, sense of compunction, sense of conscience. In other words, the realization that you can't be lazy and just watch things. You know that you're causing stress with your actions, and the wise reaction, of course, is to try to stop the kinds of actions that would cause stress and would cause suffering. This is why it's wise. And it corresponds to something I've felt for a long time. You sometimes see people who are scholars of Buddhism, and they always seem to know better than everybody else. Those poor, stupid people who are practicing aren't as wise as the scholars. That's what the scholars think. But the scholars just sit there and read the books and talk about it. The wise people are the ones who realize they've got unskillful qualities in their minds, they've got to do something about it. And it's in figuring out what you can do. That's where the wisdom lies. That's where the discernment lies. So it's important that you try to develop that sense of how important your actions are. The wisdom is something that has to lead to action. There is wisdom in the action, or you'd say that the practice here is wisdom in action. Your willingness to look at the events coming up in the mind and to step back from them just enough to notice where do these things lead? Are they skillful or are they unskillful? Ardency, of course, is very closely related to the factor that comes before right mindfulness, which is right effort. The right effort builds on right view in the sense that it makes the distinctions between skillful actions and unskillful actions, skillful qualities of mind, unskillful qualities of mind, and tries to do something about them. You know, the duties of the Four Noble Truths. You try to comprehend stress, abandon the cause, realize the cessation of stress, and develop the path to the cessation of stress. And the various duties of right effort, which are closely related to ardency follow from that, like the abandoning of the Second Noble Truth that comes in trying to prevent unskillful qualities from arising and to abandon the ones that have arisen, the developing of the path, the Fourth Noble Truth, that corresponds to trying to give rise to skillful qualities that haven't arisen yet, and then to develop them when they've arisen. And then as you try to bring that development to the, its culmination, that's when you have to comprehend the First Noble Truth, so that finally you can realize the Third. All this has to be driven by desire. The element of discernment relates very closely to desire. What kind of things do you really desire in life?
how do you want your life to play out. What you desire in life is very important, and the realization that it is important, that's an essential part of wisdom. All too often we hear that we shouldn't desire anything, that we should learn how to just stop wanting. As Ajahn Mahabhava points out, the only people who have no wants at all are people who are dead. Even Arahants have preferences. They would prefer to see people reach the end of suffering just like themselves. They would prefer to see people not harm one another. Of course, their happiness doesn't depend on it. That's why they're free. But the fact that they're free doesn't mean that they they lack compassion, or they lack discernment, or they lack powers of judgment. And so what this means, of course, is that we have to look at our lives in the light of the Four Noble Truths and realize there's work to be done. A common saying among the forest of John's is that think about the time when you're going to die. And if you look back on your life and say, boy, I wasted all that time, time that I could have devoted to being on the path, was just thrown away. And instead of abandoning the causes of stress, you were developing them. And instead of developing the path, you were abandoning the path. There would be a lot of regret if you had those feelings, if you, that was the kind of life you had. The kind of life you want to look back on is the one that whether or not you come to the end of suffering and stress, you want to say, at least I put in my best effort. I tried with all my ingenuity, all my discernment, all my energy. My time wasn't wasted. As I say, wisdom begins with a reflection on death, the fact that your life is going to end. And there are a lot of things that will just disappear with the end of life, but there are some things that will not disappear. There will be a continuity, and you want to make sure that continuity is good. You have to make sure of that. We make sure that your continuity is good right now. What are you doing? As the Buddha has you ask, days and nights fly past, fly past. What am I becoming as they fly past? What sort of person are you becoming? Are you becoming an ardent person or are you becoming a, a lazy person? The wisdom lies in the ardency. The realization that there are dangers out there, as I said, this is related to heedfulness. And the realization also you can do something about it. And then trying to figure out how you can do it. Because, of course, there are members in the committee who say, well, I'd much rather relax right now or take things easy or I need my rewards of pleasure. How are you going to deal with them? That too is an element of wisdom, knowing that there are things that you like to do, but they're going to cause harm down the line, and the wisdom lies in knowing how to talk yourself out of them. There are things you don't like to do, but are going to give rise to good results down the line. How do you talk yourself into doing them? That, the Buddha said, is a measure of your virtue. <coughs> Excuse me, measure of your discernment. So the discernment is all in the action. It's not in reading the books and observing other people or in coming up with alternative ways to spend your time. You hear about more and more people getting involved in what they call engaged Buddhism and looking down on people who meditate, saying that they're selfish. Well, it's not the Dharma speaking. That's people's defilement speaking. The best, you think, <clears throat> the best thing you can do for the world is to learn how to deal with your defilements, because otherwise they just keep burning you, and through you they burn other people. There's wisdom in realizing that, and then there's the wisdom of following through with that realization. 
realizing you've really got to do something about your mind. And the ardency with which you set on that task. That's a measure of how wise and discerning you're becoming. 